know that I write for the Times magazine, which comes out on a Saturday and I do occasional beauty columns in it. And I know you really like them, but a lot of you commented on this that was actually in the T2 supplement, which is the main supplement within the Times. It's the daily one. And it came out a couple of weeks ago and you asked me to create a video about it. One, because some of you missed it. Two, because it's behind a paywall um, and some of you aren't subscribed to the Times. But also, if you're not in the UK, you, you can't get a hold of it because you can't buy the print version. And it was in the T2 section and it was called Midlife Makeover, Day 3, The 10 Beauty Mistakes to Avoid. And it was very interesting. I was commissioned by a, a woman who always commissions me called Nicola Jeal, who I trust implicitly. I think she has the best Saturday supplement, without a doubt. And she always comes up with really good ideas. She lets me do my own thing, very rarely changes my copy. So thank you, Nicola Jeal. And she asked me to do this one. And it was the first time I've ever thought, oh, only because I didn't want to be too judgmental. I didn't want it to be full of those really old school misogynistic beauty rules about what you should do under an over 40, like no woman over 40 should have long hair. I mean, that's ridiculous. The only good thing about, and just like that, the Sex and the City reboot is Sarah Jessica Parker's hair. Let's be honest, the other thing is it's a whole, it's a whole mess, that series. Um, it's fundamentally ageist, I think, anyway. But uh, her hair is an absolute triumph in that. Good old Serge Namon. I suspect it might be a lot of extensions, but it's also beautiful styling and it's right down to here. She looks amazing. I love her hair in it. So those old school misogynistic rules about midlife and beauty are out the window. But there are some common mistakes that I'm guilty of, that some people I know are guilty of. And it's more to do with how to cope with the changes as you get older, things that happen to your face, your eyebrows, your lips, stuff like that, as you get older. So it's not about the rules of what you can and can't do. It's just about how to cope with the changes that go on as you get older. So let's dive straight in. Sparse eyebrows. Have you noticed your eyebrows have started to go? I plucked my eyebrows in the 70s and the 90s to super thin Kate Moss lines and yet I was lucky they grew back I know a lot of people don't, who are much younger than me their eyebrows didn't grow back now I've always had sort of fairly good eyebrows to here and then they just disappear I just have short eyebrows not really sparse eyebrows but if you do suffer from sparse eyebrows and you notice as you're getting older they've either gone grey or they've gone sparse rapid lash have an eyebrow serum that most people don't know about they know about the eyelash serum which is amazing it's a prostaglandin analogue that tricks the hair bulb your hair, every hair all over your body is in one of three phases, a growing phase, a resting phase or a falling phase. And it tricks the hair to go into a longer growing and resting phase so that the hairs stay there for longer. And it works. It's definitely worth using if you find your eyebrows are getting sparse. You put it on every single night the same way you do the eyelash serum. You know that Joe loves the eyelash serum. That's the first thing. The second thing is you can have your eyebrows tinted. I'm not a fan of waxing eyebrows mainly because I use retinol which is to be avoided if you do um not the retinol the waxing of the eyebrows but I'm absolutely a huge, huge fan of Blink Brow Bar they're mainly in London but I know they've teamed with John Lewis so if you've got a John Lewis near you go and check them out they're amazing my 85 year old mum goes regularly and they do an amazing job of her eyebrows so basically they thread them into shape so they get rid of any excess hairs here and here and then they tint them and it doesn't just tint the hairs to cover greys but it also tints the skin slightly for two weeks and it's amazing so they give you sort of a little faux shaped perfect eyebrow i can't recommend them enough they're amazing i'm sure if you find a local salon to do it just as well good on you but i do think it's amazing if you can because it tints the skin so for me it just sort of gives me faux ends and for my mum because she's gone grey through her eyebrows it just gives her a perfect shape she doesn't have to think about them if however you're feeling brave Ardell do a brow tint and I know a couple of people use this really successfully and I tint my own hair I mean I colour my roots regularly they need doing them don't look too closely but it's funny how I've never been brave enough to do this so I'm asking you a question shall I do a video on this and see if I can actually recreate the black blink brow bar experience <laughs> in case it goes wrong anyway I'm trying to make fun content anyway but um, this was um, available in Boots and Superdrug and everything. And I know people that use this really successfully. So maybe I should just try this. Anyway, they are my hints for if your brows are going sparse. Can I just say also, I'm a huge fan of tinted brow gels. This is Legendary Lashes, which is a tiny spoolie. They're all much of a muchness in terms of the formula, but I love this tiny spoolie. They are a tinted brow gel, a wash off tinted brow gel. And they've got, got sort of microfibers in them that mimic hairs and they sort of keep your brows in shape as well. And they do cover grey brows. Ironically, seeing as I'm grey, 
through my hair and I have been since I was been going grey since I was 26 I don't have any grey eyebrows and there's the budget version that is L'Oreal plump and set brow that's blonde I'm normally brunette that has a tiny little angled spoolie again very similar formulations a gentle tint with little faux hairs in it that holds your brow in place and actually will go over the areas where you're missing brows as well number two leaking lipstick I'm not great with dark lips stick at the best of times I never have even when I was younger but since having a cold sore recurrently through my 30s after a skiing trip um, I just noticed that red lipstick tends not to stay in place and, and tends to bleed there are two things you can do you can use MAC prep and prime which I don't have here which is this amazing waxy you put it onto your onto freshly cleansed skin onto you put your makeup on and then when you're ready to go with your lipstick you put it on you wait two or three minutes it dries it's almost like a it's not really a lip balm, it's more like a wax that goes on and you go just over the edges of your lips, wait two or three minutes, put your lipstick on, it'll hold it in place. It also has a soft focus silicon effect in it that sort of blurs fine lines if you've got smokers lines. Why they're called that, I don't know. They've nothing to do with smoking, they're to do with talking and smiling, so don't feel guilty about having them. But I have to say, I do think the easiest thing to do is to use a transparent lip liner. This is the long con one. So it looks like that and it goes on and that's just the wax. So that's all the wax, none of the pigment. You go slightly over the edge. And if you are going to overline your lips, if you're watching this and you're much younger and you just want larger looking lips, this is the perfect way to do it. It will fill in those tiny, tiny fine lines that uh, tend to form around your lips as you get older and then lock the lipstick in place. Simple. Dying hair too dark. I have to say, I, I see a lot of people doing this. When you go grey, and if you decide to kind of go grey naturally, and lots of people did in lockdown, shout out to both Sally Hughes and um, Joe Hoare on here, who I think did amazingly deciding to go grey through lockdown, and they both have amazing hair. If you decide it's not for you, though, and you are going to tint your hair, just be careful to not go back to the hair colour you had in your 20s and 30s when you're in your 40s and 50s and beyond and when you go grey. Because your eyebrows are going to lighten up, your lashes are going to lighten up, your, even your skin tends to lose definition as you get older. And I think a lighter colour is going to suit you. My advice and what I wrote about in T2 was to go probably the colour that you went, not post puberty, when we all tend to go darker in our te late teens and 20s, but that time just pre-puberty, probably when you were about 10, 11, 12, and the chances are your hair was slightly lighter then. And I think that's much more flattering. So for example, I actually dyed my roots back to my base colour here, which is sort of dirty, muddy, brown colour, dark blonde colour, typical mouse colour. But it lightens out towards the ends because the greys become my highlight and I actually do colour my own hair quite a lot. I have done it consistently now for the better part of two years. Um, so this is the colour I was when I was sort of eight, nine, ten. And I think it's much more flattering. It's just you have to be careful when you go that sort of solid one block auburn red brown color when you're older i think it's better to have lighter shades through your hair it's just more flattering because you're as i said you lose definition through your brows and your lashes so it just looks softer uh what do i mention i mentioned l'oreal excellence because it covers 100 percent of gray it's really easy to use and the colors i recommend to, to dye your roots tend to be that sort of six seven eight mid-tone rather than really dark tones and also you're much less likely to make a mistake if you just dye your roots and you, you choose opt for a mid-tone see if colorists out there disagree with me most hair colorists actually hate people dyeing their own hair color but when you're gray and you, your roots need doing every two weeks what are you supposed to do i don't have the time to go to the salon that often do you by the way i've got tutorials on here on how to dye your own hair it's, it's actually quite easy um lash lost so many people talk about losing their lashes. Um, either they revert to lash extensions, which actually are really bad for your lashes in the long term, or they look for lash thickening mascaras. But the first thing you need to do is use an eyelash serum. And I'm going to go back to Rapid Lash as well. So I've talked about Rapid Brow. This is Rapid Lash. Prostaglandin analog works in the same way. You put it on every single night and it tricks your lashes into growing for longer. And it works. Last time I used it, I had to trim my eyelashes You've got to use it, though. You can't just remember three nights a week. You've got to use it every single night just before you go to bed. You won't notice it straight away, but within three to six weeks, you'll notice your lashes are getting longer and longer. It doesn't make them thicker. 
doesn't make hair grow back where it wasn't before it just makes the existing eyelashes grow thicker now the thing is what's interesting about eyelashes is a lot of them are super fine and you tend not to notice those and obviously they're going through phases of shedding this will make them grow for longer so suddenly your lashes will look thicker it's not that you'll have more lashes it's just that existing ones will stay in longer and and they will get longer so I always advise you do that and then tint them. And the one I recommend is the 30 day mascara from um, Colour Sport, available in Boots and Superdrug. I've actually done that. It's, I haven't got it here, but it's so easy to do. You basically just tint your own eyelashes. You put it on, you mix up too little. There's an activator in the dye. I always go for black. There is a dark brown as well. You apply it with a little spoolie, one of the little mascara curly brushes that comes with it. You apply it, you're 15 minutes rinse it off so easy to do and it just actually tints the ends of the lashes most and they're the bits that as they get longer tend to lose their color and go slightly blonder so you'll really notice it. it's a really good combination and it's not unusual for people to fill their lashes to get thinner or even to go gray as you get older so tinting your own eyelashes is a good still skill to get on board with the frizz oh i talk about fighting the frizz and i'm going to mention olaplex six here for me Without a doubt, the most powerful defloofing, defrizzing blow dry cream. Actually, this is a Redkin One United spray. But if you, because my hair is actually not too frizzy at the moment, um, and I actually haven't gone out today, but if I was going to go out, I would then top it with Olaplex 6. Olaplex 6 is a, a blow dry cream, and I highly recommend it. It's really, really good. I'm not sure if it has a lot of the the sulfur bond repairing in it but it's really full of emollients that weighs down your hair and sort of puts a waterproof coat on it also I've noticed that the next day if you either steam pot or blow dry your hair again or just put a bit of heat through it it reactivates it so it's really good so that's Olaplex 6 that's the bond building styling cream uh cover up creases oh my god this is so interesting one of the most common questions I get is how the hell do I start using concealer and not have it go into my fine lines and this is there's lots of hints and tips but I basically say that the secret is to put a hyaluronic acid on just before. Even if you've put your skincare on and you've maybe gone and blow dried your hair or you've cleaned your teeth and, you know, it might be sort of 15, 20 minutes and your skin is quite dry afterwards. Go back in, apply a hyaluronic acid right around the eyes just before you put your concealer on because it will plump out the superficial fine lines. Now, it runs in my family. I have really crepey eyes. So here, the skin is really super crepey and on the top here and I put my hyaluronic acid right on again and then I go in with my concealer which one you use is up to you I really like NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer I really like the BB Cream Crayons from Arborium they're really easy you just put them in there on the outer edges but my most recent discovery and the one I've been raving about is the Lancome Tiens Adol Ultra Wear All Over which a lot of people use actually just in place of foundation because it is super light all three of them are beautiful they won't sit in the fine lines and creases if you prep the skin first. And the secret to prepping the skin first is a hyaluronic acid before. So you just pat it on and then you're ready to go. And also, can I just say, it's where you put your concealer. So you need to put it in this inner circle here, which tends not to have fine lines. It tends to be more of a dent and a dark circle. Avoid this section here, which is the line, but and then just put it on the outer edge there. So there and there is normally all you need. You might need it slightly on the top there as well. But this hyaluronic acid serum can go all over your eyes. It's absolutely fine. What you want is something that doesn't pill under makeup. And that's one of the really good ones. Uh, if you can get a hyaluronic acid with a glycerin in, it's a really good idea. Some of the pure old school single molecular hyaluronic acids that tighten as they dry, mm, they're not so good. Uh, they tend to pill under makeup. So uh, that's the how to cover up your creases without it getting in your creases, if you see what I mean. Cover your dark circles and your creases without it getting in your fine lines. That's the way to do it. And then I've done the focus pull, which is really interesting. So as you get older, and Joe and I laugh about this the whole time, your eyesight is going to start to go, right? And you can't see your face to do your makeup in. So you will notice that I, when I do my makeup, always use a magnifying mirror, always use a magnifying mirror. Mine's a really old school times 21 from Selfridges had a beauty department that was upstairs, a bathroom department. But this is the one I most often recommend. This is the Tweezerman and it's a, it's a light up makeup, a makeup mirror. It's absolutely brilliant. I can't recommend it enough. It's really reasonably priced. It has suction clips on, clips on the back like mine. It has a light up. So basically what you do is you put that 
oh, I've got my dirty fingerprints all over it now. You put that on your existing makeup mirror or on a window and that's all you need. Yes, I love the Ricky makeup mirrors. I think they're amazing. As I say, mine is slightly larger because it's an old school one. You get them from local pharmacies. You're kind of looking at times 20, times 10 is quite easy to get. And I think it's 9.99. I got this from Next Beauty, but I think you can get them in boots as well. It's just brilliant. Do you know where it comes into your zone is when you go to somebody else's house or you go to a hotel and um turn it off and you can't get enough daylight or you're not in front of daylight to make up your face one it will mean you don't have to put your glasses on to make your makeup on, to put your makeup on two you won't miss errant chin hairs or eyebrow hairs three you're going to be able to see your makeup really clearly but just remember you don't look like you're doing that <laughs> that's times 10 and very grabby now remember that don't walk out of the house thinking you look you're seeing yourself the way you are in that times 10 mirror it's purely for putting your makeup on and seeing the little sort of creases and mistakes you might make and blending things out checking you haven't got spinach in your teeth no errant chin hairs all that sort of stuff remember you don't look like that in real life but it is a really handy tool to have don't pick your spots in front of it it can be very dangerous uh oh getting rid of hooded eyes is another one now, this is really interesting. This was a little hint and tip I got from Ruby Hammer when I worked with her. She did my makeup. She loves the NARS Single Eyeshadow in Blondie, which is the one that I featured. However, I've got a whole host of ones here that are really similar. And these are so old. The fact that Bobbi Brown haven't made those circular compacts for years. <laughs> I mean, it's powder. It's not really going to go off. But this is Cement and Nude by Bobbi Brown. You're looking for that sort of nude shade. That's obviously a cool, that's obviously a warmer one. There's a one here from, I think this is Fingen. Yes, Fingen from um, MAC. You can even use a bronzer. It has to be matte. It has to be a neutral shade. That is obviously Hula from Benefit, which I learned from Sam Chapman. You can apply like that. And it's really simple. This is how I've got my makeup on today. So it looks like I don't really have any eyeshadow on. I think I've got, in fact, I know for a fact, I've got Nude on by Bobbi Brown. You basically get a buffing brush like that and you literally just do that back and forth. What is it does? It pushes that hanging hood back like that. I do a tiny bit on the outside and then you lift at the edges. It's really, really, really simple to master. And basically it tricks, it's an illusion. It tricks your, um, this part, which is lighter, darker and pushes it back so you have a fake crease on your eye really clever i think i laughed about um the hood from thunderbirds and said do you know who the hood from thunderbirds is and i said of course you do you're reading a midlife beauty feature anyway that's how to push back hooded eyes and to give you the illusion of a deeper set eyes um i then talk about uh the textural change that your hair will go through as it goes gray and brazilian blow dries yay or nay i think they're not good for your hair in the short term as in the process is damaging but in the long term i think they cancel out the daily heat styling so for me, I'm a fan and I really love the Inoa, I-N-O-A-R. I have it done at Hershison, but lots of people do. It's a really good system. I highly recommend it. And then I talk about soap brows. And I mentioned the West Barn Soap Brow Company and Brow Brush. So soap brows are a really interesting technique to push brows up. And it was originally done with normally a sort of clear glycerin soap and a toothbrush. And what you would do is you would slightly dampen down the soap and then brush through and it dries clear and it dries the brushes up so if you don't want to put a tint through your brows but actually it works just as well with these things as well and what you do is you basically always brush your eyebrows up and just the act of doing that will lift them probably by about a millimeter not lift them as in where they are on your face but the outer edge will lift very slightly by a millimeter it gives you sort of an instant facelift also puts the definition back in your brows that you lose as you get older. They are my 10 beauty mistakes to avoid in midlife. Are they really mistakes? I think what they are are ways to cope with what happens to your face as you get older. Putting back the definition, uh, pushing back the sort of slightly saggy eyelid here, how to cope with crepey eyelids, that sort of stuff, how to cope, cope with fine lines around your lips. They're things that happen to all of us when we get older. So uh, they're really simple tips that and tricks that I've learned from amazing makeup artists and hairstylists and things like that over the years. So I hope they help. 
that was my original feature that came out a couple of weeks in T2. If you are a subscriber to The Times, go on, I'll put a link in and you can go in and have a look. I'll put it up on, on stories and I'll link all the products down below as well. This was requested by my Facebook group. Uh, I've got loads of people on Facebook that follow me and they have a conversation with each other. So I've got a support group called Nadine Bagger Community where they chat to each other. And then I've got a Facebook group as well where I post all my stuff if you... I mean, Instagram and Facebook are brothers and sisters, right? So everything should share across. But um, if you're not a fan of Instagram, this will go up on Facebook as well.